What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be doing a tier list for some of the most influential knives over the last really really long time. Not everything that you might expect to be here is going to be here, but I thought this might be fun. Really this is kind of like a test bed for this format. Uh, I've wanted to do this for a while and I can apply this to a lot of different things in the future, so you'll have to let me know if you like it. This isn't too serious and it's basically just based on my kind of knee-jerk reaction how much I like it, right? You can put these in any tiers that you want, uh, but just to kind of show you what I mean, the S tier is uh, right at the top there uh, under Legend, A tier is Huge Win, B tier is Glad It Exists, uh, C tier is meh. D tier is no thanks, and of course, F tier will be Poo Poo Town, as you probably expected. I'm just going to be kind of placing them in there. I'm going to link my favorites down in the description so that you guys can check them out if you're not familiar or you haven't checked them out yet. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. What should we start with here? The images aren't perfect, but I think there's enough there that you'll know kind of what's going on. How about the Benchmade 940? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Glad It Exists. I used to EDC this knife a lot. It's not my favorite thing in the entire world, but I'm glad it exists, right? That's really all the more we have to talk about there. Kershaw Blur, uh, kind of the same thing. It's an assisted knife. Uh, I used to really, really love it, and now I'm kind of just glad that it exists. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more uh, interesting here. How about the Spyderco PM2? Yeah, I'm going to put that in huge W. The Spyderco PM2 is excellent. I don't love all of the uh, recent price increases, but I do think the Spyderco PM2 is an absolutely excellent knife, and it is definitely something that I would uh, still carry, you know, to this day. Uh, let's, yeah, you know what? How about the Gerber Paraframe? The Gerber Paraframe, for some reason, is loved by a lot of people, but not by me. That is a Poo Poo Town knife, for sure. Not my favorite. If you like it, that's perfectly fine. I think that's okay. Definitely not for me. Um, how about something gigantic? Not perfectly expressed with this picture. The Cold Steel Espada XL. I would describe this knife as a meme knife. There's a lot of people who take it very, very seriously. Uh, I... <laughs> I think it perfectly accentuates what Cold Steel is, has been about for the last however long they've been around. Uh, yeah, I'm glad it exists. I'm glad it exists. Some of these, like, man, no thanks is gonna, they're kind of just there, right? Um, okay, how about the CRKT M16? Now, there's a lot of knives, like, you're gonna, a lot of people will be like, how could you not include this? Or there's, like, really, like, a subcategory of that. Yeah, it, I think the video might go on too long, but here's an example of something that I would put in the meh category. I uh, I do like how the knife looks. I just am kind of, you know, I'm kind of meh about it, right? Uh, the ZT0562. In this case, we've got a picture of a titanium one here. I'm going to put that in the huge W category. I still love that knife. A lot of you, you know, may have forgotten about it or you might be surprised that I'd put it there, but I, I would definitely put it there. Uh, let's see. How about the, let's go back to Cold Steel. The Cold Steel American Lawman is also going to go in the huge W category. That is such an excellent knife. One of the best dollar for dollar knives out there. If you, I mean, if you're really counting like durability, right? Um, I'm going to, let's, this might be a little controversial, and I'll explain more later. The current Benchmade Griptilian, the current state of the, the current Benchmade Griptilian, I'm going to put in meh. I would have put it a lot higher a long time ago, but there's a knife that outclasses it right now, uh, for sure, absolutely, uh, and we'll get to that. Um, let's see here. How about the, um, the uh, yeah, let's do the Protec Malibu. I'm, I'm going to put that in Glad It, glad it uh, Exists. I would have put it in Huge W a long time ago, but honestly, anymore, there's just so many great button lock knives out there that it's really hard to over-celebrate that one, you know? Um, Civivi Elementum is definitely... <laughs> I'm going to put it... Eh, I'm going to put it in meh. Yeah, I'm going to put it in meh. That's where I'm going to put it. Um, let's see here, uh, the, yeah, let's go with the MSI, the Microtech MSI, a new heavy hitter 
Do I want to put that under Legend? No, I'm going to put that under Huge W. Microtech MSI is definitely a huge win, right? I mean, if we're going to count pricing. The reason I didn't go over specifically my criteria is because I really wanted it to just be knee jerk, right? So, sorry, my phone's going off there. Hogdeca. Hogdeca. Personally. Personally. I think a lot of people would put the Hogdeca under Huge W. I'm going to put it under glad it exists. I think it's an excellent knife. Maybe you like it more than me. I think the vast majority of people out there who are kind of in the same, you know, part of the knife world that I enjoy, uh, I'm going to, I think they probably would put it under huge W. I'm going to put it under glad it, glad it exists. Um, the Boker Kalashnikov. You know what? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. The Boker Kalashnikov is, um, Probably one of the better uh, budget side opening automatic knives out there. Um, but for me personally, like how likely am I to carry it? Boy, honestly, I'm probably more like this. This, this is a weird one. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for this. I'm going to put it under no thanks. Um, I just, it, it is, it's, it's decent. This is a weird one. It's hard for me to, because this is like personal versus what, you know, whether or not I'd recommend it personally. Uh, uh, I personally would not carry it. Uh, I, I don't really enjoy it. I, I think I would select uh, just a higher tier automatic knife. But um, I, I think it's still a decent choice for people looking for a budget automatic knife. It's just there's so many other recommendable things out there. Uh, Vision FG. Listen, I'll explain myself. That's a legendary knife. That's a legendary knife, and I'll tell you why. It's because when you count all, number one, I'll still carry it today. Still carry and use it today. It's got the super lock on it, ambidextrous, fun to use, inexpensive, right? If you lose it or you break it somehow, you can just go get another one, right? The Vision FG is a great example of an absolutely legendary knife. What would be another legendary knife to me? Hmm, I'll tell you what. I think it's probably going to have to be the Demco AD20. The USA Demco AD20. It has, it's just bigger than the 20.5. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's American made. Uh, personally, I like the bigger, more robust. I don't need it, right? I don't need all that stuff, but I like the bigger, more, more robust, you know, USA super extra Demco ness, right? Um, what else? What else? Let's do the Demco AD20.5. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a huge W, right? Um, the only thing keeping it from being absolutely legend is, you know, the, the price tag for what it is. I mean, it's kind of hard. Like a lot of people would choose the Vision FG. I know I'm not explaining myself, right? Just remember, experimental template for the Metal Complex YouTube channel. I can't put it in S tier and the USA Demco uh, 8020. Uh, let's see here. Um, Benchmade Bug Out. No, thanks. <laughs> it's not a bad knife. Benchmade Bug Out's a great knife, but I... I Personally, I think I'd almost rather carry the Elementum. You know what? I'm going to change the Elementum to no thanks. <laughs> I really am just not a huge fan of the Elementum. Uh, the Lightning OTF. I'm going to put that in meh. Yeah. I'm glad it exists. That's actually a super cool knife. Yeah, I'm glad. It's not a, a huge win right? Anymore. I am glad it exists though, because it's probably, I mean, it beats out so many other knives that are in, at the same price point that are OTF and in, in, in operation, right? Um, just the price is just so good. Uh, ZT0392. A lot of people are going, what? What ZT? ZT0392. I'm going to put it under huge win. Um, I know it's discontinued. I just absolutely love that knife. It is literally a ZT Eclipse. I mean, built with the exact same quality with arguably a better flipper tab. That whole series was just super cool. I still have my black one and I carry it and use it. I love that knife. I think it's awesome. QSP Penguin. Glad it exists. Budget knife. One of the best budget knives out there. Arguably the best budget knife out there for the, for the money. Like one of the best budget knives out there for the money, right? It's like $32 or something like that. Ontario Rat. One and two. It's okay, right? It's it's all right. If if you like it, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Ria Exo Gravity Knife. I can't put it under huge win. I think it's really cool. I had a, a lot of fun carrying that knife. I think it's uh, definitely a, a a surprising one. Honestly, I'm gonna put it under glad it exists. It's a surprising one for sure. 
Uh, I thought that it wouldn't be super fun to carry and use. I thought it would be kind of inconvenient or clunky. No, it's actually really, it, it works really well as, as an EDC knife. It's just weird because it's a gravity knife. Um, let's do the Spyderco Manix 2 automatic huge win. The Spyderco Manix 2 is such an exceptionally good knife. And it's one of the best USA Spyderco knives that you can buy in terms of how much it costs versus what you'll get out of it. The Manix 2, super great. Um, man, on that same note, no, let's not, let's not do spider clear that. Let's talk about the Benchmade 710. God, that used to be a huge W for me, but anymore, I mean, I know it's like long discontinued, right? I know a lot of people are like, if you have the 710 on this, like, why don't you have like 30 other knives that are discontinued, but largely influential? I built this list in like 30 minutes. I just threw together some knives right, that I thought would make an entertaining video. The Benchmade 710, I'm glad it exists. I'm glad it exists, right? That's where I'm going to put it. XM24, I can't put that. The XM24, hold on a second. XM18 is going to go a huge W. And I know a lot of people, oh my God, you're such a gigantic hinderer fanboy. Ugh, I am, I am. But let's be fair. The XM18 3.5 inch is probably, that's their flagship model, and that's arguably the best model they make. Maybe the Eclipse, right? I can't put it under Legend, not after being exposed to the Demco 8020, but I'll put it, yeah, I'll put it there. Uh, XM24 is going to go in um, Glad It Exists. I, I am glad it exists. I, I don't think it's my most favorite knife in the whole world to carry, right? I guess this is largely based on carry. Um, let's do the Microtech Stitch Ramlock Instant Legend. Instant. Oh my goodness. The Microtech Ramlock Stitch, I love that knife. It's everything that the MSI is, but better because it's more stitchy and cool and it has the ergonomics that I like, right? Yeah. Oh boy. Bench, not that one yet. Let's do Civivi Praxis. Um, I'm glad it exists. Yeah. Civivi Praxis, pretty good. Uh, same with the um, Pyrite. I am glad that that exists as well. I think they are excellent knives, but I, they're just not enough to go under huge W and definitely not legend. Um, Spyderco Shaman, everything but the price. Everything but the price. Huge win. Spyderco Shaman is an excellent model. Wonderful. Absolutely love EDCing it. The price tag sucks. Absolutely sucks. Uh, Medford Praetorian Tie is going to go under... Um, Meh, anymore. No, that's not fair. God, how much do I like it? I, I would never carry it, right? It's not completely based on carry. So I'm trying to go knee-jerk as much as I can. I'm glad the Praetor... Nah. It's, I just, uh, it's not there anymore for me. The Praetorian. All right. It's ridiculously overpriced. It's horrifically inconvenient to carry and use. But it is an iconic knife, right? I'm going to put it under meh. Spyderco Para 3, huge win. Do I want to put that under S tier? As much as I've carried it and used it? Boy. I'll tell you what will definitely go S tier is the uh, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2. That is an absolute S tier knife for sure. For sure. Uh, wonderful. USA made, ambidextrous lock and pocket clip positions. It's everything that the Benchmade Griptilian was. It's just better, and it's a better price. And that's why the Griptilian is way down here under meh, right? Uh, Spyderco uh, Sabenza, I am I know this is going to be controversial. I'm not a huge fan of it. Not the biggest fan in the whole world. I recognize that it's a great user, iconic knife, right? A lot of people like it. But I love the Umnumzan so much more, and I'm going to put that under huge W. The Umnumzan is absolutely worth that huge win, bordering on S tier or Legend. Absolutely. SNG, Strider SNG. I do love the ergonomics and I, I actually enjoy carrying or I have enjoyed carrying the SNG in the past and I've carried my SMF a little bit. I do find it a little bit awkward. Um, I'm going to put that one under glad it exists. I'm going to put um, the Open L at number eight under Poo Poo Town. I hate that knife, but it's $10. It's only $10. That's a great use. I, yeah, thanks. I don't like it. 
Um, I absolutely hate it. If you like it, that's perfectly fine, right? The last one here, the Microtech Ultratech. I can't, I, I can't say that I really think that it's S tier, right? Uh, I, I, because I really don't. I don't, I don't think that it's an S tier knife. I do think that it is a huge W though. Uh, for the OTF world American style, I'm big, obviously. I mean, look at look at huge win. I'm just I'm realizing this now. Under huge W, I'm just going to analyze my own knee jerk reaction tier list here. For some, a small percentage of iconic knives over the last ten to fifteen years, maybe longer, right? The huge W category is all USA made except for the um, American Lawman, I believe. Yeah, everything there is USA made. So I do have a knee-jerk bias, I guess, to USA products. Up at the top in Legend, I actually have a knife that's made in China. And the other three are, are S tier, right? Glad it exists. USA, USA, Taiwan, USA, USA, China, 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 USA, USA, China, China, USA. So it's not, okay. As we go down, not really. I mean, yeah, it's kind of all over the place. But you can see here... My preferences. And I think this largely reflects, you know, how I review, like what I what I person what I prefer, right? Ergonomic lines, li I like the American made stuff. I like some of the more robust stuff. I like full size knives. Um, I like knives that are fully or semi ambidextrous, right? Um, it would be really fun to do this a few different ways, right? Different types of categories, right? Dim different limitations on the lists, right? Make it specific to certain brands, certain operational systems, locking systems. I think this would be really fun. I cannot tell you how long it took me to set this up to make this work correctly. So I am praying to the computer and YouTube gods that this video actually came out okay. Please let me know what you thought of this format. It is weird knowing that you guys can see me on the little corner camera there. I didn't zoom up super, you know, you don't need that much definition on my face, but... Anyways, a lot of my favorites will be linked in the description. Let me know what you thought of this video. If you guys liked it, I will definitely do more in the future. And let me know what your ideas might be for this, you know, tier list uh, format. Anyways, that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.